Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're going to improve upon our old single layer track mat tutorial by using our new Mask Vertex Expression Access in After Effects. That's really hard to say. The other day I got a comment in an older tutorial. It was single layer track mats, I think that was number 7. And I realized that now that we can access mask points in an expression, that we can use that to offset things like position, so we can move a layer around but have the mask locked to where we made it originally. When I drag through this, you can see that the mask stays even though we have position animated. So once I figured that out, I had a little bit of a problem. If I want to scale this down, and then I want to scale this down to match, that seems fine, but when this moves, it shifts. And that's because we have to scale the actual position movement to match. So let's go into this comp and see how we fixed it. I'm going to open up our expression, and here's everything you need. This expression is up on our website under this tutorial. I can't post this one to YouTube because it uses an evil less than symbol. So on there you'll find a link to the post. That said, let's go over this really quickly. So first we're going to set variable p equal to transform.position. And then we're going to set variable s equal to transform.scale. And we're going to divide that by 100. That's going to take scale out of being a direct percent and make it a range from 0 to 1. So we can use it to multiply and divide with. Then we're going to start setting up our offset variable. And the first line of that we're going to set it equal to p.key1.value minus p.value. You might have to change this up a little bit based on what key you're going to use, but obviously if you're using this technique, you're going to have at least two keyframes. Also keep in mind key here uh, is not zero indexed, so the first key is one. So what we're doing is grabbing the value of the first position keyframe, comparing to where it is currently. Then in our next line, we're going to take offset again, and we're going to set it equal to offset zero, so our x position, divided by the scale of zero, so our x scale, comma, offset 1, or our Y position, divided by S1, which is our Y scale. So that'll take care of cases where the layer is not scaled to 100%. Then we're going to grab our mask points. So we have PTS equals mask mask one dot mask path dot points. For some reason, I can't get this to work with like this. I don't know why, but this dot points does not work. Then we're going to do a quick for loop. So we have 4I equals 0, and that's semicolons in between each one of these parts. I is less than points dot length pts.length, semicolon, i++. plus plus. So for the total programming noob, that means we're going to start off at variable i equal to zero, and while it is less than the length of the array of points, so while we haven't gone through every point yet, we're going to increment i by one, which is the i++, plus plus, every time it runs through the loop. So the first time it's zero until we reach this bracket, and then it becomes one, and then it goes back through the loop. So in this points array, we're going to set points at position i, those are brackets around the i, equal to points i plus offset. So this basically negates the movement of position. Then when we're done with that, we're going to do create path, and we're going to pass in that points array. So that basically takes the mask that we have, adds the offset to every point, and then spits out a new mask. So there's a couple of small issues with this, but I think it's way easier than the previous version of the single layer track mat that we used. Because you don't really have to remember what you're keyframing or how to move things around. So the first main problem is that if we bring out our gen tool, you notice that we can't really click on any of these points. And that's because we have an expression on the mask path. It probably has to do with this thing not wanting to calculate as you move. So the simple way to be able to modify your mask is just to turn off the expression. So now you can move it around. So the other problem we have is that if we turn this back on and we move down in time to where this thing has moved already, and we turn this off, you notice the mask jumps. And that's because this expression is the only thing keeping the mask where it was. So if you want to modify this and see where you're actually moving it, you have to be at the time that this keyframe references. And that's why I said you might have to modify this line where it picks which key that you're looking at as reference. But once you move this thing around, turn this back on, and it's locked again. So it's really not a huge deal. The best way to use this is just set this up on a layer, put a position keyframe on it, even do your old animation if you want, then go back to first position, draw your mask in, open up your mask properties, say this is gone already, get rid of that, and just select that, and then I'm going to use Quiver, which you can see I'm actually working on a new version here. I pull up Lock Mask. I'm going to add it to it. See right there, there we go. And then it's working again. And as you can see, what's really neat, since we used the X and Y scale, is that we can actually scale this bigger. I'm just going to leave that so you can, you can see it lock in. But now as it moves, it will still stay in place, no matter how you scale these things. If you wanted to negate the scale, you could probably do something similar. I haven't built that yet. If you're way better than me at trig and geometry, you can actually probably cancel out rotation 
That is a simple transform, so you just probably need to know some better math than I do. I'll probably figure it out at some point. It might even be possible that just using two comp or something like that could actually work fine. I didn't have time to test that out, but this should fit most use cases, especially considering the tutorial before. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed that and maybe take it further. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure you keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. And as always, I am Joe, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.